and blessings, family, Sister Aja Lee. Oh, the resurrection of the old white man is just off the charts as to make you want to just gag. I, I, I'm, And in saying that, I, I upset all sorts of people who, if you are upset about that, uh, I... I don't know what to say to you, okay? Um, Because I don't wish anybody any harm, but wrinkles are wrinkles. And, you know, between Al Pacino and Harrison Ford and Jack Nicholson and Johnny Depp, who isn't biologically old, but that hard drug life, well, woo, he just looks awful. And now with this, the only reason why I'm talking about it is because Bill Murray, who has never been an attractive man, he's been interesting only because he has such a bemused, permanent bemused expression on his face. And he's funny. He, dude, is funny. He's been funny in his life. Um, But that don't make you attractive. He is... Now, at the age of 73, reportedly dating Kellis, who I've spoken on briefly in terms of her husband, Mike Mora, who passed away at, uh, I do believe he passed away at 47, about maybe three years ago. Um, Don't quote me on that one, but... He died from uh, virulent stage four stomach cancer. And I spoke on it from the aspect of that, you know, they were both black. But I don't think that her husband was. But for Kellis, I did a refresh look into her ethnicity. And she identifies as black. Her father and mother they look black even though they said the mother was it's I guess she's still alive I don't wish her death and I don't know about her father but um Chinese and Puerto Rican was Puerto Rican but black pretty much is so at the same time and Kellis is always identified as black I don't know if I'm even pronouncing her name Uh, correctly because I don't pay attention to celebrities and I would definitively call her a celebrity just based off of that song milkshake which was just so vile and disgusting I have no words um but she calls herself black which makes her a swirler as opposed to Megan who's just doing what biracials overwhelmingly do which is attach themselves as deeply into whiteness as they can possibly go and Kellis has a lot of uh, oh I don't want to say whether it's emotional issues because to me as soon as you are striving to be famous and you're going to just sing total slutdom songs in order to achieve that and what a shame because her father was a jazz musician I didn't listen to any of his music in particular uh, but I'm sure his music wasn't about you know just egregious amounts of slutting and whoring um if you're going to do that you're a celebrity. That's what you are. And all of them have massive egos. So she's gone back and forth with the mentally deranged Farrell Williams, who was on, I don't know, was a GQ or something, peddling the new white racism, which is trying to make us the face of their trans confusion. Um, And she had originally, Kellis had been in a band, a group called the Neptunes, and she didn't read the contract. She said she was young. That's how they get them all. They're young, and they think that these folks who are smiling at them are their friends, like so many of us think, just because we have a couple nice white coworkers or, you know, we may know a white person whom we are very careful not to tell the full truth to, 
So that doesn't qualify as a friend, but we'll call them friends. And then you'll hear someone like me and you'll call me militant. Okay. Just because I'm like, look, we, we need to follow the most high. He says separate. All right. If you don't like me, you don't like the most high. Definitely. All right. Cause he ain't about trying to compromise with the devil. And so that all said, and these folks took advantage of Kellis and her just naivete, believing the nonsense that they were peddling. And she signed a contract and had no idea that she had no right. She thought all the profits were going to be split three ways, and they were not at all. And she has no copyright over the song that she got really angry with Beyonce for sampling, but I guess Beyonce made it cool with Farrah Williams and another dude that Kellis called Spineless Chad. Um, and so they didn't need to call up Kellis over anything. And the way that she just sort of really accentuates, I'm talking about Kellis, the way she accentuates, you know, her looks <laughs> is so ridiculous it's so obvious that she is a narcissist and well I can't accuse her of being a narcissist but definitely uh just massively arrogant is patently obvious but at the same time is she doesn't have the team working for her uh, that a Beyonce would have and Beyonce is a vile sorceress in my full conclusion of the matter Beyonce's on for it all I've done so many shares highlighting how her music is thoroughly satanic and she's there to beguile us she and her J Boeing you know like let's just accept all the stereotypes white people have ever made about us husband with the video they did where they were showing the Louvre Museum and they were dragging in black us as their slaves and presenting it to French people because this is a global strategy, a global collaboration to genocide black us. And they're all, even if they don't know, they're on board for it. So you know, that makes me remember Kellis's departed husband, which is the reason why, supposedly, as she got together with this incredibly wrinkled man. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I just, I, I couldn't. And, and, but not wanting to lose the point, they both just recently lost their spouses. Um, and... Bill Murray, I'm like, he was with a younger white woman and good for him. White people should love white people. You should be so used to seeing yours age and you should be supporting that aging so that yours don't race off to get really creep toy plastic surgery just up the wazoo so that you look weird as hell. The president of the United States looks weird as hell on top of just in general be, being weird. And then let's not get into Putin, all right? Um, They should love themselves. But when you are black, you know, this is like the oldest picture I could find of Denzel Washington, who is now 63 right now, which is 10 years younger uh, than... Bill Murray, so we don't know how it's going to go because they tend to lead that Negro Pian life, black celebrities, a big time, and it does destroy your melanin. Uh, but in general, ooh, and, and being with Dr. Z, oh my goodness, oh my God, to see that brother just looking so huggable, so kissable, so just tour de force black <laughs> i mean i don't I, I i for me that would be a strange thing a horrifying thing to be just like staring at a turkey neck I, i'm just saying if for white people this should be wonderful it should be like a shit you know reminders of home it should make you feel nostalgic right uh 
this should be something that it just feels normal. It just feels the way it is because who decides what is the definition of any particular style of being human? I mean, here go a bunch of, uh, I just put in 100-year-old Tibetan man. I don't think that this dude right here, he, he looks a whole lot younger than 100. Uh, but I'm just pointing out that, you know, there's a respect and admiration. And in Tibetan cultures, I know they have reverence for their elders. And I think that makes a, all the difference in the world where... The elders are not burdened by just wrinkles that are brought on by feeling awful about themselves. Whereas I think the reason they're doing this massive resurrection of old white men for their own personal reasons that I assess through listening to their music and hearing the lyrics, such as a lot of people know uh, Pink Floyd, where pretty much the entirety of their music was themed around absolute soul-crushing guilt uh, for fooling everybody, for playing the games and being full of crap. And so there's a whole theme of, you know, by the time they reach retirement age, uh, they they have the there's a reason why they have the highest suicide rate of anybody as they age um or among the highest suicide rates is because they feel like crap but then more important to us is really to support uh the intensification of the concubine nations availableness to all levels of just sexual tourism on white men's part because these concubines are deluded out of their daggone minds where they think that getting together with pale men is some sort of rise hypergamous move in life and they've given up trying to defend it as if they have more in common uh, with these pale men uh, it's just basically prostitution so that they could get material wealth when is that someone who's leading you towards a better morality when they know when they get together with these men uh, they can't speak their minds I'm just I, I, I'm saying I grew up with these men, right? This is, I clicked in or typed in 70-year-old black men. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, whoa. Ooh. Ah, I got a lot to look forward to. I would not hear at all. Not at all. Because I'm a black woman and that's what I, I'm used to the other category. Right? Now, in highlighting this beautiful couple here. I don't mean them, but these concubine women should be very, very careful because here this is a 50-year-old sister. I don't know how old her husband is, but her name is Susie and his name is Tony. They are the Troxlers. And they just had their very first baby and she was 50. I want you to understand the medical staff who delivered a baby, who cared for her during her whole pregnancy because she is of advanced maternal age, call this a miracle baby. Do not fall for the programming that is trying deliberately to make black women think that you could have a baby any old time you feel like it. That's not true. They would not call this a miracle baby if this were the standard. However, they want you pimped out for these dudes so that they can use and abuse you any which way they want and you won't even know. You'll waste your whole life thinking you got till 73 to have a baby and they will have run a train through you and you will have not spent your best
best time with the best man on the planet for you having beautiful black babies. Because in their movies, in their, even the way they run social media, everything is about exterminating black you. Black you, even though if you're a swirler and you happen to be listening to this, or if you're someone who would call me militant, their whole society is systemically working on your eradication. And they're even out there trying to put out propaganda that there's no such thing as systemic racism when all they do is they change the racism like a snake sheds its skin. All they do is they change the type of racism so that now concubines and bed bucks, you ain't nothing but the same old step and fetch it. And the trans sutured folks or the wearing a dress and getting on the cover of GQ magazine, you are working for our genocide. You just have been given such a false lie of what rates as successful. When the more established you are with these guys as far as their approval goes, the less free y'all. You can't talk, you can't say nothing, and you will even fight your own, which is what Kellis was going back and forth with, with Beyonce. Oh, we're all black women up in here. We should be working together. Well, whose side was she working on when she was putting them songs together, destroying young girls' ability to think ahead in their choices of men and not just think a booty call is some sort of, you know, like claim the fame, position of power when you ain't nothing but a daggone trinket. And now suddenly you care about camaraderie, the cohesiveness of the sisterhood. Stop it. And I'm also, I'm looking at her hair right now in this all the super fakeness that she had up on there with the blonde this, the blonde that. And now she got something with locks. Still the blonde, but it looks more natural. That, in my conclusion, is on purpose. Just like with Erica Badu, where all on years she had, you know, I thought those locks were hers. And all of a sudden, turned out it was just a wig. And then she blonding it up herself. That's so they can present a more authentic, look at me, I'm so pro-black image, and just lure you into the concubine nation. What your own influence is in perpetrating the fraud that somehow or another, this is an attractive man just because you both lost your spouses. It was so, go talk to, uh, I don't know, go talk to some counselor or something. Go find one of these brothers who can surely, I mean, ooh, you are not going to be more healed as a black woman than when you are connected with a black man because his resonance, his compassion, his sympathy, I'm talking about the sane ones, not the ones who've been talked into believing that Shaft is anything but a destructive narrative for us. The sane ones, and by this age, oh, the sanity is sweet with the brothers, okay? Go talk to one of them, at least you won't mind when the lights come on, <laughs> I'm just saying, I, this, that's fine. That's fine, okay? This is a horror. Um, I'm, that, I'm just for blackmail, okay? Right? That's, uh, I just had to put that out there because it's just the, the propaganda is off the charts. Even though you swirlers and bed bucks, you are so friggin' last century's news as far as I'm concerned because... You don't even protect yourselves. It's embarrassing. I get tired of talking. Like, if you don't care about yourselves, then you're the least of the ones that I would care about, okay? I'm just saying. It's just the fact. I wish you no harm, uh, but you obviously wish yourself 
all the visual harm in the world, emotional, spiritual, every type of harm, because these people here, they own you. It ain't the other way around. Love your family. And just stepping away from our enemies is going to be so easy. We already do that. We just haven't assessed all the ways that we just feel more comfortable around each other. Uh, but they've been treating the whole world so badly for so long, but everybody's taken their way of doing business. As sacrosanct, when it's atrocious, it's atrocious. They put poisons in their products. And then they just lie about it and tell you, oh, it's pure, oh, it's pure. And nothing of the sort is true. And so when there's a product right in front of you that is truly exquisite in terms of what is put in it because the producer loves you, knows that you are her or his people, there's, there's no competition whatsoever. Go to 25,000yearcycle.org and get your heel on from Dr. Z and from me because we know without you, there is no me. These swirlers, they have no idea anything could happen to them in snow country. And there'll be nobody there who will say a daggone word as those folks, they get on code real quick, okay? All right. Love you. Straight, black, family, pride, and we are on our way to forever. What a sweet forever that is. Peace and blessings.